Hi, it's Andrew Gaffney, publisher of Demand Gen Report, and I'm here at uh, Dreamforce. I'm joined by Brian Carden. Hey, Andrew, how are you? Good Thanks to see you again, Brian. So, show is in full force, kicking along. You know, we've talked a lot about this, but um, Salesforce traditionally was about reporting. Um, you guys are taking it to a whole other level with analytics, where things are really starting to get more um, pipelines are trying to get more predictive. So, can you talk a little bit about that? What that discussion's like here? Yeah, it's so interesting. Uh, you know, most people are backwards looking, and now with big data, predictive analytics, you can actually use past to predict who's going to buy and what messages are most responsive. So, seeing sort of a next generation right. of marketing and analytics sort of emerge, and leading companies like I'm looking around here on the floor, lots of our clients are here that are doing it right now. So, it's DocuSign. And it's Dell and it's HP and Adobe. Really very thoughtful marketers are now embracing predictive analytics, Andrew. So it's interesting because it applies to both marketing and sales. We look at things like lead scoring that are really changing when you get to that, that next generation of it. Can you talk about how, how it's going to change some of those factors? Yeah, it works two ways. Um, you know, we hear the term social selling a great deal and we see more and more. Actually, some of your research showed that 24% of a salesperson's time is spent doing research. But what we're seeing now that a much more efficient way to do it is to actually have bots and algorithms crawling through websites and finding the relevant data that can actually predict who's going to buy. So it's sort of a new era of uh, performance improvement for the sales teams right. by actually crawling through websites, finding the attributes that are predictive, and then calling only those clients that are predicted to close. So much more efficient, they're focused on likely buyers. Yes. And then from a marketing standpoint, that, that can also improve how they're, they're shaping campaigns, who they're targeting. Can you talk a little bit about how that factors Yeah, you can actually have activity-driven campaigns. So let's say there's a uh, something happens and you can automatically trigger a campaign. I'll give you a good example. One of our clients sells foreign exchange software and what they learned is that if a uh, prospect opens up an office in a foreign country, they're 20 times more likely to buy. So what that company's done, they set off an automatic trigger. So automatically, the marketing team sends an email, says, congratulations, Andrew, you just opened up an office in Beijing, you're probably very interested in foreign exchange issues. Right. So that's been uh, very, very successful for a lot of companies. So what we've seen is that traditional lead scoring only sees the tip of the iceberg. Right. You only know about someone if they come to their website or open your email, but there's all this other information that is discussed that now marketing and sales organizations are embracing and harnessing. So you and I have known each other for a long time. The whole marketing automation space is starting to grow up and marketing automation has you know, led the initial uh, adoption of things like lead scoring. Um, predictive analytics is really adding another layer to that. So it'll take marketing automation to the next level. Is that how you see it? Yeah, you know, it's been great to see. You know, you were there, you and I were there at the yeah. start of marketing automation. It's become very mainstream. I guess a lot of the data shows that 40 or 50 percent of now B2B companies are uh, using marketing innovation. Of course, most aren't using it until its fullest right. value. They're using very little of the functionality. But we're seeing sort of a next generation of activity happen that is really on top of marketing automation, uh, that is predictive analytics and using much more data than just what Steve Woods called digital body language. Right. Digital body language, what people do on the website and email is important, but there are all these other things like patents, what's on your website, did you just get funding, are you hiring people? All of those other attributes that are knowable, discoverable, you can actually use them to predict what somebody's going to do next. Yeah, much more likely indicators. Exactly right. All right, well, I really appreciate you making time again for us. My pleasure. Anytime. Thanks, buddy. Thanks.